Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the chance to present our part of our work in Saudi Arabia. So the title of my presentation today is uh, Mesoporous Nano-Sized Copper Oxide Magnesium Aluminum Oxide Catalysts for Financial Selective Hinner Reactions, Green Sustainable Prospectives. Just uh, before I'm going to, I, have, I would like to introduce our university, because most of them uh, got confused between Kaust and the Kaust. King of his university line in Jeddah, and Jeddah is the port the city for the uh, Arabian uh, Peninsula in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> it's a nice city with almost 4 million uh, population. And this is a beach there, the Corniche, which is a nice place to visit as well. And this is the uh, highest fountain worldwide in the sea, the Red Sea. And this is old, this is 17th century, this found, and this is our university. So the university is the uh, bird gate with the tent, it's like tent for sporting for the students and many, many buildings for the university. <clears throat> our group of research uh, was founded in 2004 because when I moved from Egypt and working in Saudi Arabia in 2004, I started to establish a group of the catalysis there and we are now more than 11 researchers, 10 graduate students. We have internal collaboration between SABIC uh, company, KAUST, as well as we have international collaboration in uh, UCL London, University College London, Utrecht University, Netherlands, Britain, British Alexander University in England. Just have to quick directly to my presentation, the target of this work of the student of mine for the master degree is to synthesize or resynthesize an old reaction, but using a new technique, uh, using almost nine of the aspects of the 12 aspects of the green chemistry. So you'll find during this presentation that we are using catalyst to reduce the time, to reduce the energy and everything. So let us go to the presentation. So Henna reaction itself is an old reaction, but it's very important as well, the reaction is using nitrile K with aldehydes in the presence of base and solvent for the preparation of the Henner product. The Henner product is considered to be one of the carbon carbon coupling reactions. And the most important thing in this reaction is when you have R2 in the hydrogen form, you could obtain nitroalkyl. R3 in hydrogen form, you could have alpha nitroalkyl ketone and by reduction directly of the nitroalkyl product, you could find beta amino alcohol, and there are different, many, many, many applications of such kind of the important organic compounds. So, how to synthesize only to be specific, with a specific target, to one and only one isolable product, and by this way, you will um, have 100% economy, which one of the basis of the organic of the green chemistry as well. The disadvantage of this process is coming from the retro reaction, which affects the yield and the process as well. This process is not environmentally benign procedures, as you have hazard solvents and so on working up for a long time by conventional methods. Formation of side products, which affect, of course, the atom economy, as I, I said before. Long time procedures, this means more cost, more energy. And homogeneous catalysts, which have Many, many disadvantages by the are non environmental corrosion, hard separation, coded PVUs, and etc. etc. So, heterogeneous catalysis could provide non corrosive process, easy separation, environmentally benign, electronic conductivity, thermal stability, long life catalyst. Stuck with two problems, which is the homogeneous catalysis usually have an advantage as the heterogeneous one in which is the efficiency and selectivity of certain processes. So how to overcome this obstacle and to have a highly selective catalyst in a short time. This was a challenge. So to think for how to find the catalyst, we have to think for many things. Number one, we need a base. We need a catalyst uh, with large surface area. We need a certain porous material. So we have to think directly for the layer double hydroxide material. Layer double hydroxide materials, they are formed by the bosite structure of the magnesium hydroxide, 
by replacing of the, one of the divalent cations by the trivalent cation, which is usually to be aluminum, and by replacing the divalent by trivalent to increase the positively charged particles in the cationic sheets, which uh, led to incorporation of the anions in the gallery between the cationic sheets, and due to hydrogen bonding, so you have hydroxyl group, hydrogen, you are creating some basic chronological basic science here. Again, <clears throat> this is the first what the layer double hydroxide could provide. If we can sign layer, layer double hydroxide at a certain temperature, we could remove only the carbonate structure from the interlayer. But if we continue calcination, we could obtain the metal oxide collapse the structure. So we could have the metal oxide material with large surface area, with mesoporous nature, and you have some terminal uh, hydroxyl group as well. So we have the basic structure. Accordingly, we thought to uh, prepare an active species which is very specific towards alcohol formation, which is copper. We know that the copper is used for methyl production. So we could introduce the copper in the cationic sheet of the material from the beginning by replacing magnesium bit by bit. So, cover magnesium 1.5 to 0.5, 2 to 0, and 1 to 1 to 1. Decalcination, according to the temperature protocol, we selected the 500 degrees centigrade as a calcination temperature in order to be the cover oxide support with metal oxide catalysts. <clears throat> and for the characterization, there is all the XRF measurements show that the chemical composition is complemented with a nominal chemical composition, which is one to one to one for cover uh, magnesium aluminum catalyst. And for the uh, cover two, the same ratio, cover three, the same ratio. So the good precipitation using co precipitation method was successful method for the preparation of the catalyst in the uh, recommended phase structure. <clears throat> then takes are the measurements for the catalyst that can sign at 500 degree copper 1 to magnesium 1 and millennium 1. It's for the ANSI side material, it still retain the structure of succeeded to synthesized a layer double hydroxide material or hydrotoxide like structure. Replacing copper, uh, replacing magnesium by copper in the structure, it's isomorphal substitution of the magnesium, and this means also you retain the same structure. Just by increasing the copper content, mm. we, start, we start to have, keeping the same structure, but we have some impurities from malachite phase. Calcination of such material led to the collapse of the structure, obtaining copper oxide and magnesium oxide, replace the structure with a more flexible structure of aluminum oxide. This is the, the same image of the calcined material after calcination. Mm. And for the catalyst two, where the more copper, less magnesium, also we have copper oxide material, just the crystal size increases a little bit for the copper oxide. And then for the last material where there is no magnesium and only copper aluminum, we succeed also to have the copper oxide supported, but now in gamma aluminum, and this is the particle size little bit start to be agglomerated and to increase. Here is the, the, the it's more cloudy shape, and the size from according to um, X-ray diffraction measurements, we can find that the the metallic the uh, crystal size increases upon increasing the amount of copper in the material. <coughs> XPS measurements was important to know what the oxidation state of different uh, materials on the surface. So we could find copper found in only one and only one oxidation state, which is copper two, and the form of the copper oxide. Aluminum three, magnesium. The only important thing is the oxygen. Here, oxygen, we have two different spectra for the oxygen one in the oxide form and the other one in the hydroxyl form. As you see, by increasing the amount of the uh, cover from cover one to cover three, the oxide form increases on expense of the hydroxyl form. This means cover one, which is calcite originally was cover one to magnesium one to aluminium one, still have more hydroxyl 
groups on the surface of the atlas itself. The surface area measurements and pool size distribution of the material showing that both two catalysts that side that containing magnesium and copper, they are of the same type of isotherm, type 4 isotherm, mesoporous material. It's multimodal phase, it's not only pure mesoporous one, it's mesomacroporous material. But the surface area, as you see, by increasing the amount of copper, the surface area decreases upon increasing the copper on expense of the magnesium one. So now we have a catalyst with large surface area, mesoporous, macroporous in nature, as well as we could expect to have some hydroxyl group. We have to test this by measuring the CO2 TBD. CO2 TBD is telling us that there are three main peaks, one in the low temperature range, which is weak basic sites, and one at the high temperature range, which is a strong basic sites. We have weak and strong basic site for cover one, still have two peaks in cover two, and there is no one for the cover containing, only cover containing catalyst. This means we have now large surface area catalyst, mesoporous material, basic. We have to go to the reaction. For the reaction, we did the conventional method and under ultrasound irradiation method. So the conventional method and ultrasound irradiation we still have high yield for all the synthesized catalysts. But cover one showed much better catalysts. You see here, it's only one minute. We repeated the experiment many times. We have only one minute, 99% yield of the other product. Only one and only one product. You have here 100% atomic economy. Okay, one isolable product. We have to be sure from this, we go in to throw Different anhydrides using only nitromethane and different anhydrides we have the same. The results have been many times. We have a very short time, very high turnover number, very high turnover frequency for such material. This means we succeeded to synthesize, but we have to test the reuse of the catalyst. If the catalyst could be reused again or not. Accordingly, we went to them reaction, after finishing the reaction, made filtration, drying, using the catalyst more and more under ultrasonic radiation for this thing. This is a condition of the reaction. We could find that our catalyst, this is the results of the six times using of the of such material. So six times reuse the same catalyst and giving the same high yield in one minute. This means we go to the following. The green reaction described here offers a rapid atom economy and safe alternative to the other models for the formation of the nitro derivatives using the recyclable heterogeneous catalyst cover oxide under ultrasound derivation. <coughs> reaction proceeds under mild conditions give products in excellent yields, 100% atom economy, therefore attaining Many principles of the green chemistry with other advantages of the procedure, including the simple separation and purification. So, the catalytic efficiency of the copper oxide was explained in the light of its nano sized, crystal size, large surface area, mesoporous basic characteristics, uh, and provide durable catalyst reused for long period of time. So, what we attained, we attained almost nine of the 12 aspects of the real chemistry in this presentation. And I would like to thank, of course, my colleagues, my student, Budur Al-Hajdi, uh, co-supervisor, Hibat Kashmiri, and my, uh, uh, always my doctor, Hodesh Bilz, that, that helps me in the preparation of the presentation, and my wife, Dr. Nisteen Said, which is organic sciences material, and of course, thank you for giving your uh, attention. Can it also be applied on bioaldehydes, the catalyst synthesizer? 
uh, we did not use such kind of wild right, but we, we have to try in order to give you the right answer. But what we tried, just we changed the aldehydes, uh, fixing the nitromethane, and in order to just to, to uh, what should we say, um, to follow up the protocol, the protocol is sustainable or not. But we did not try for the wild right. have to try. Thank you. If you can listen to it's such efficient, probably uh, you have a chance to use nitroethane. Nitroethane. Yeah. So with this, uh, pro it's a much lower reactivity. Uh, so probably you can test it and uh, understand uh, some mechanism. Because uh, if the, the reaction process is such fast, it's difficult to understand the mechanism. Okay. Yeah, you are absolutely right. We have to try with other nitro compounds, not only the nitromethane, those are nitro compounds for testing. But the issue is, you know, this is just mass of the least challenge, it's your work, yes. that's presenting. We can continue such direction. Why not? It's very important as well to find it. Firstly, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question about uh, the method of uh, synthesize your catalysts. Are you preparing another method classic like uh, sulfide and operate in the same uh, reaction? Thank you for your question. Uh, I had a presentation which is quite describing to how extent you could control the material using the layer hydroxide, uh, the layer double hydroxide material root. Usually people using the support as it is and making either impregnation or precipitation on the support. And this is affect the retention of the material, especially if you have an active species on the surface of the support. But if you start from the beginning to uh, introduce your active species in the cationic sheet, then do calcination, you will have a material support with active species on the surface and is 100% stable. And this, the upcoming work already, since I such material for the naked catalysts, Instead of using palladium catalyst for carbon carbon coupling, it is a well known Suzuki coupling reaction. Mm -hmm. And we succeeded by great success when you stabilize the nickel in the structure of the material. So, layer double, double hydroxide route is an alternative route to the other methods of preparation of the catalyst. This is the advantage of this material. Thank you. The second one about uh, the temperature of uh, about the calcination. For your catalyst, sometimes if you change to vary your uh, temperature, so the porosity is not the same. Yes. Uh, oh, the porosity is not the same, of course, because you know when you are uh, there are many reasons for the change of the of the of the uh, porosity. Number one, you have impurities that are formed and precipitated during the precipitation method. It's not only now the layer of hydroxide material; you have some malachites. Amalgamate phase will affect the surface area of the material. Uh, probably you have some cover also precipitated in the pools, but the, the issue is here you have only one uniform phase structure for the cover, although it's a small surface area. So there are many, many parameters that could affect and you have to study them individually in order to get the right answer for your question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, running a bit late. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.